heatsink replacement for Mac Mini A1347 2010 through 2012. The tools we'll need are a T5, T6, T8 screwdriver, tweezers, and thermal paste. Go ahead and begin by flipping the unit over and hitting that like button. Jokes aside, as you can see, there's a little dot right there. What we want to do is put our both fingers on the left right and kind of twist it counterclockwise, about a quarter of an inch. Uh, and then we can just tip the unit over and remove the rear cover. Now we have access to the inner parts of the Mac Mini. We'll need to remove the three screws, T6 screws, that are securing the fan. Go ahead and start with the top right screw, and then the top left screw, and then the bottom right uh, long screw. I like to keep the screws in place, just unscrew them. Now you can lift up the fan, and then gently from underneath, get your finger under the cable and push up until it pops out of its socket. Make sure to do this gently, don't rip this cable. Next, let's remove this T6 screw that is securing the uh, bracket. It's just a plastic placement bracket. Uh, it doesn't really have much of a purpose. Go ahead and remove that screw and just kind of pry it right out. Put it over to the side. We'll need a T8 screwdriver for these two screws on the side of the white fly antenna and now a T6 screwdriver for the two bottom screws. With those removed, you can go ahead and start lifting up the Wi-Fi antenna. It's uh, connected. Go ahead and pull that connection apart gently. Just pop it up and out. There we go. Wi-Fi antenna is out. There are two screws here holding the logic board to the case. Go ahead and remove this bottom one first. Let's remove this screw right here. This screw is the last one holding the logic board in. Uh, remove that. And put it to the side. Now let's go ahead and disconnect both the optical drive, the hard drive, the sensors for the hard drive, and the optical drive, as well as the other two uh, peripherals right there. So with those uh, six connections, disconnected we can go ahead and push on the heat sink while holding the case breath thumbs and the logic board should pop out just a little bit you want to get it out about half an inch to an inch and now you want to go ahead and pry the hard drive out the hard drive comes right out so here let's go ahead and twist the unit to the side here so you can see a little better Let's go ahead and pull out that power cable near the memory with our tweezers. And now that frees up the board and we can just completely slide it out. And the logic board is out. Go ahead and remove this T6 screw and this T6 screw. And that will free up the speaker. And you can just lift it up. It's still interconnected on the board. So go ahead and just pull that out and the speaker is free. Let's remove the three T8 screws that are securing the heatsink. Go ahead and put them over to the side. Now on top here there's a T5 screw for whatever reason. Uh, it's just a cap screw that goes on top of another screw. So go ahead and remove that fourth screw underneath it. That's a T8. Go ahead and pull out the heatsink connection cable. Pop that out. And now we should be able to uh, lift up the heatsink, and uh, it's free. Reassembly A1347, 010 through 012. Let's go ahead and clean up this heatsink with any cloth or a paper towel even. You could just shake off the uh, first layers of it and then just kind of rub off the remainder residue so that the heatsink is clear. Do the same on both of the CPUs. Make sure not to smear uh, the uh, residual thermal paste. Make sure to just uh, clear it off, shake it off, pick up the board if you need to. Now apply one drop, uh, one thick drop of uh, thermal paste on the CPU and one uh, 
drop on the GPU. When we put this heatsink on top, it should squeeze those dots and spread them out along the entire chip. So now that that's uh, put in place, go ahead and secure it with those four uh, T8 screws and that one little T5 on the left. Let's reconnect the heatsink to the logic board so that it registers the sensor. Now let's go ahead and reconnect that speaker right there by aligning that and clicking that in and then securing the speaker with the two T6 screws one on the top and one on the bottom that connects it to the heatsink as well let's go ahead and slide the board back in uh, gently making sure that it um, uh, is aligned properly and going in with these now when we're about an inch out go ahead and plug in that power cable from the power supply uh, this might take a little bit of uh, messing around to get that in straight but uh, it's not that difficult once that's plugged in make sure that none of the cables are being blocked uh, and uh, go ahead and clip push the clips on the logic board uh, in on the side and slide the logic board into place okay now you want to make sure you pull out any cables if they're jammed and we're gonna go one by one there should be six connections here uh, so we'll start off with the uh, the first two ribbon ca cables there that were popping in place uh, then the uh, sensors from the hard drive um, and from the optical drive as well um, that might take a little bit of time once those are in go ahead and plug in both the hard drive and the optical make sure you hear that click uh, they should be firmly in check all six connections before you proceed there should be one two three four five six and then that seventh one is the fan go ahead and pop in that screw securing the logic board that T-screw and go ahead and put in that last screw securing the logic board the last T-screw as well go ahead and align the Wi-Fi antenna in the following orientation put its cable over the uh, Wi-Fi card clip and then just pop it into place make sure it's nice and tight and locked now go ahead and align the antenna and secure the bottom uh, two uh, T6 screws first and then the uh, two uh, T screws on uh, the right and the left now let's place back this useless bracket um, I guess it's designed to protect the heatsink from the top of the case go ahead and secure it on the bottom with the T screw on the bottom only now let's put the uh, fan over the logic board and go ahead and click in its connector and make sure it's nice and firm and connected to the logic board and now align it and make sure that long screw on the bottom goes all the way through now go ahead and secure those uh, T6 screws all three of them we can now go ahead and put the top uh, over at an angle first and then twist it into its locking position and that's it we're all done thank you very much for watching